Welcome to the SCLD podcast, where we talk about all the things you can do and find at the library. Hello, I'm Erin Dodge with SCLD. I'm the communication specialist here. Today with me is Dana Menino with us again. She is an education and enrichment librarian here at Spokane County Library District. And today we're going to talk about something that is uh, really fun, uh, poetry slams. And uh, they're, they're teen poetry slams in the community. And let's first start about, let's start talking about librarians and what you guys do. Because before I started working here, you know, you think librarian, oh, they're in the library. And they're there, they tell you what books to read, or they suggest books to read. <laughs> <laughs> and they help you find the books. But librarians do more than that. And you guys are out in the community a lot. So can you talk a little bit about that community work that you do? Sure. And the Poetry Slam is actually one of the examples I give when people ask, what do you do as a librarian? Okay. Or when people... Um, uh, let on somehow that they have uh, just the images you described in your file for what you do in a library. <laughs> I mean, I think it's it's pretty, it's pretty common. Yeah, yeah. And and the poetry slams are a great example of that. But some other examples of that, um, there are a handful of high schools in our service area that do not have school librarians. So I go and visit them and show them how to use our online databases and talk about research, doing a few of the things that Wonderful. school librarians would usually do. Um, in addition to that, we partner with um, community organizations, and uh, we work really hard to get uh, the, uh, a full understanding of what the library offers out to the community. So one of the ways that we do both of those things is um, during the summertime, I feel like at least once a week, I'm standing under one of those uh, one of those white tents um, right. at, a, at a table, uh, handing out brochures and color-changing pencils, yes. and <laughs> I'm out there to do two things. Uh, one is to showcase something that the library has to offer. Sometimes I will have one of our STEM Explorer kits on there. Sometimes I'll have a little flyer about our um, museum passes, right. things that people might not know they can take advantage of at the library. And so I'll talk to families about that. But then the, 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 double benefit is that I'm usually tabling next to another community organization. So for example, I've tabled next to World Relief many times and uh, through talking, chatting while we're at those events, um, they have started using our pronunciator database, which has uh, wonderful language classes where the, you can change it so that the interface for learning, like the, the press here for lesson, press here to start, changes to the language that the um, user is coming from right. and then uh, that can teach you English from there. So those kind of collaborations where we find out what the community needs and then we suggest a library resource that fills them are a big part of my job and not all of it happens inside of the library. And today we're here to talk about persons, but I want to talk about pronunciation for just a minute. <laughs> Because that is cool. Um, I know I've been on there and it also, if you're, if you're an English speaker looking to go to another country like traveling, I know that they have specific lessons in that language that you're looking for all about traveling. Like, Words you would use like, oh, I am here for my, you know, to check into my hotel room. Yes. Or, you know, where is the closest restaurant or mm -hmm. where can I find the bus stop? You know, those sorts of things, the words that you would need while traveling. And, um, and then like what you were saying where if English isn't your first language, um, you can adjust that in pronunciator. So you're learning from your language to the language you want to learn. So if you're learning English, it'll, mm -hmm. it'll, have those prompts for you, like you said. So it's pretty cool. Yes. And you can use pronunciator at scld.org forward slash pronunciator, P-R-O-N-U-N-C-I-A-T-O-R. Oh my gosh, did I do that right? I didn't know we were going to have a spelling bee today, Erin. That's wonderful. <laughs> or just go to our digital library. There's a link on the homepage and you'll find it there. <laughs> wonderful. Okay, back to poetry slams. Yes. Now, this is out in the community. And, and what what is a poetry slam for those that may not be familiar with what it is? So slam poetry is a particular format of poetry. If you're imagining Robert Burns or Shakespeare, you're in the wrong bucket of poets okay. right now. <laughs> it's not Emily. <laughs> no, not Emily Dickinson today. Slam poetry is performance poetry. It's not meant to be read. It's meant to be heard. Uh, it originated in the 1980s in Chicago. Uh, the style was a reaction against um, very elaborate poetry recitals that involved costumes and props and reciting of those more formal poems. The, the salon. Yes. Or, you know, yes. Sort of yes. The formal. Okay. Yes. And uh, so in reaction to that, uh, we had a, a pared down um, 
they call it kind of a popularization, a democratization, okay. um, a bringing of poetry to the people. Uh, so people would come in and perform, and it is a competition. Um, okay. So in some poetry slams, judges are selected from the audience. We can talk later about where our judges come from. Okay. Um, but uh, the poets are given a score based on um, the con- the the quality of the poem they're performing, but also their performance. The performance aspect. So it's it's two art forms in one. Okay. Um, and it's it's great. I love this in particular because you get to hear what's on teens' minds. Yeah. And I, I think it's interesting there is that performance aspect. And I know that some teen poets maybe are more introverted. So yes. this would potentially push them out of their comfort zone in a good way. Yes, and we we try not to put anybody in a position they are not prepared for. Okay. So uh, what the public will see will be our wonderful poetry slams, but what's going on in the background is that we have hired a professional poet who has experience with slam poetry. Okay. We have sent him into each of those schools, him or her, this year it's a him, him into each of those schools and given the students a workshop. They have brought their poems to him. He has given them uh, feedback on how to make the poem better and also how to perform their poem. Okay. After that, they have a practice slam in their school to select who will go on to the regional slams. And that was my next question was how mm-hmm. they select and, and great. So there is someone in there to help guide and, mm-hmm. and, and get them going. Wonderful. Yes. Um, so what are some topics that teens have covered? Oh, teens talk about everything they <laughs> and do. they think about everything. They're wonderful. No, one of my favorite parts of this time of year is I get, um, I get a, a quick check on what's on teens' mind. Uh, last year, our winning poem uh, talked about the war in Ukraine. Okay. Um, you hear poems about anything a teen is talking about, and they range from the silly uh, to very serious and mature topics. So uh, we have a poem that has gone down in Poetry Slam history that was a poem narrated from the point of view of a pair of underwear lying on a teen's floor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've also had poems about uh, the difficulty of choosing the correct candy bar. Okay. In a moment. Uh, we've had a lot of poems about school shootings. Sadly, sure. it's on teens' minds. Yeah. Uh, we hear political poems. Uh, one year we heard one that was pretty much a campaign speech. Um, and we hear um, poems about current events like the war in Ukraine. Yeah. And lots of poems about um, the experience of having a, facing a mental health challenge okay. and uh, what what resources are needed to address that. So if you're curious about what teens are thinking, you should come to the Poetry Slam because they will tell you, frankly, <laughs> honestly, and uh, sometimes in rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then we were talking about last year's uh, Poetry Slam, and, and what was, you were talking about, was there a winning poem? Yes, the poet? winning the, uh, the winning poet uh, for last year's was Anthony Todd, and his poem was about Ukraine. But we've seen our, um, our poets who repeat uh, who perform regularly with us every year as oh, they wonderful. go through high school, um, go on to do really wonderful things. Uh, one of last year's finalists, Martin Leo, uh, went on to win a Spokane Scholars Scholarship this year. And I know that he included his participation and his scores from prior Poetry Slams in that. So wonderful. The winners of poet, our Poetry Slams, the Valley Slam, the Northern Slam, and the Grand, Grand Slam, receive cash prizes generously donated by the Spokane Library Foundation, the Library Foundation of Spokane County. And um, in addition to that, they can use their participation in the Poetry Slam on scholarship applications, on college applications um, to foster their career. And they are being put in contact with professional poets. We hire former poet laureates to be our judges. We hire professional poets to do those workshops. So there's a networking aspect, too, where they get to uh, show their work to people who are working in the field and get feedback. That's wonderful. That's great. Okay, so we're going to talk about those dates right now so folks can go and watch and cheer on the poets, the Mm -hmm. slam poets. We have the Northern Slam first. That's at Riverside High School in Chatteroy, and that is Thursday, March 16th at 6.30 p.m. The next one will be the Valley Slam at University High School in Spokane Valley, and that is Wednesday, March 22nd at 6.30. And then so the folks, the finalists from those two, come together for the Grand Slam, Mm -hmm. and that's in April, and that's at the Gathering House um, uh, at the corner of Garland and Monroe across from the Garland Theater. That's Tuesday, April 11th at 6.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And like you said, anybody's welcome to come and watch and cheer on the poets and... um, 
Shall we tell them about um, how to attend yes. a poetry slam? Yes, please okay. do. Okay, <laughs> so there are some secrets in the know behaviors that only happen at a poetry slam that you should be ready for. So uh, when you attend a poetry slam during the poem, uh, one should not applaud because it will interrupt the poem. Uh, however, snapping is encouraged. All right. So anytime you would applaud during a poem, you instead snap. Uh, if the poet is struggling or if they are talking about something particularly vulnerable and you want them to feel your support, you rub your hands together like this. And then at the end of the poem, that's the time when you can applaud. Uh, likewise, uh, the audiences are expected, the audiences are expected to react to the scores that the judges post. <laughs> so if you agree with the score that the judge holds up on his panel, then there should be thunderous applause. And if you disagree with the score that the judge puts up on their panel, there should be loud booing. Um, <laughs> you boo the judges. Not you the do poets. boo the judges. The first time I judged a high school poetry <laughs> slam. I got some veiled death threats from what? a bunch of teenagers <laughs> sitting next to me. And that was when I knew that we had something special. If you can get a teenage boy to care so passionately about poetry that he is willing to threaten the adult who is not scoring his... The poem was about um, the wrestler, John Cena. Oh, uh, and if, you if, can't see him. No, and if I couldn't um, you know, score that poem high enough, then, um, then they were going to do some undisclosed thing. They left it Nothing at that. Nothing but a 10. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It had to be a 10 for that. So, yeah. So, the yes, it's, you know, the Poetry Slams are one of the events every year that kind of restores my faith in humanity because you can't sit there in a room full of teenagers so passionate and not leave thinking, you know, there's hope for the future. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Dana. And thank you for watching today, listening today. We hope you check out a Poetry Slam, uh, make an evening of it, uh, cheer on some wonderful poets, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.